Now, this, this issue is related to, you know, in, in, if you make a normal, normal 3D game, not VR, you can set the, the UI type to screen space overlay. So what does that mean is that your UI is going to appear on top of everything. But in, for VR, we cannot use overlay, so we can either use screen space camera or word space. But neither of these two have an overlay function to them, which means that you cannot actually specify the Unity to render this UI element on top of other objects. So what we need to do is that we need to actually make a customer scripts that basically messes around with Unity rendering a little bit to bring those things in front. And the way it works is that uh, Unity, when Unity renders things, it does something called uh, Z-test. So basically, it checks the depth of your different element to see which one should order on top of each other or not, which one should appear first. So what we need, what I want to do is I write a script that basically ignore this Z-test do what I say, which is bring this always in front. I want to always be able to see this. So what I'm going to do is that, uh, let's go here, script. So we want to call this uh, word space over lay UI. And I want to attach this to like, let's say this canvas. So you can attach it to anywhere. You don't have to attach it to the canvas. Actually, let's attach it to the board space here. So we're gonna work with UI, so that's the first thing I'm gonna import. Using Unity Engine. Now I want to create a variable of type string. I'm gonna name it shader. Now, this is going to be the name of the variable that later on we're going to change. If there isn't, I'm defining it as a script because we need to define the name of the variable so we can access it. But the name of the, the, the element that we want to change is actually called unity underscore GUI. Now, just this this piece of code is, is is okay if you don't understand most of it because it's it's just a different area that what you have learned. It's related to rendering a game, like how Unity does game engine game rendering, and to be honest, 99% of the time you never have to touch this. And this is like a rare case that actually Unity should have a built-in system for it, but it doesn't, so we can make our own. So what I want to do is that I'm going to say Unity Engine dot uh, rendering dot um, per Should be unity engine dot rendering dot compare function. Now I mean, that's the type. That's actually my variable type. Now I need to give it a name. So this is gonna be called my desired UI 
comparison. So this is a comparison that I'm going to write, which is different from the unity. And the way it's going to, what I'm going to assign this is that unity engine rendering always. So I want this to be always gets rendered. Now, you might, sometimes you might only have one object, one like UI element and you want to have it as overlay, but you might have a series of objects. So in this case, let's, let's make it, let's make our work easier and declare it as a series. So in the future, we want to add more, we can do it easily. So here I'm going to create uh, graphics as a, array or li as a list or array and then I'm going to call this UI elements to apply the UI elements to apply effect now I can go back here I can just drag this one here and this one as well. So I have both of them. Now we want to basically, I want to have, have the current Unity calculation material. I want to make a copy of it, change it, and then reassign it. So basically, I need to keep track of a lot of material. And, you know, in like so far, you learn about like data structure, like list or array, which holds like objects in terms of like index. But there's also another type called hash map or dictionary, which holds the data based on the key value and the object itself. The, the advantage of this is that you can search for object through the key value. That's why it makes it easier to be used for here. So I'm going to say private dictionary. Now I want to, here is the key and the value. And the type of both of these is going to be material. So material. <coughs> Material, and now we want to give it a name. And in, in C sharp, it's called dictionary. In a lot of other languages, they call it hash map, and sometimes map as well. So we, when they name it, sometimes you would see name like, let's say, materials mapping. That's what it means. And now we can call it new dictionary. Now, uh, what I did is here is basically I initialized it. Now, I don't think I'm going to need the void update because it's just start. We just want to change the setting. So here, I'm going to use it for each loop. Now, you know, you have a for loop. In for loop, you, you get like an i value and you pass that i value through like your array and you get access to the element. But with for each loop, it's the same thing, but the difference is that you directly get access to the element value. So you don't have, you don't have the i anymore. And another sort of limitation of it is that it has to go through all of the elements. Like with for loop, you can stop with midway, or you can define the increment or decrement range. But this one, with for each, it just starts from the beginning element till the end and goes through them. And here I can say var graphic in. So this is now, this is a variable I created. Now I'm gonna. I'm going to say the 
the list that I want to look for, which is UI elements. This not or if you don't if you don't know what var is, C sharp is actually is a bit interesting because in here it doesn't let you. Uh, it's explicit in here. So you, when you declare a variable, you need to declare the type and then give it a name. What, what var is, is that it could be any type. The, the C-sharp would pick whatever type it is and assign it to it. So in this case, this is actually material, but I'm just going to declare it as var. You can, once you are inside the method, you can use var. But outside of it, you cannot. So now here, what I'm going to do is that let's create the material. This is equals to graphic. That's material for rendering. Now if I want to do a null checking like before. So if my material is null, so we can write the debug message target material does, does not have rendering component. Then we can just say continue what you were doing as before and here you can say if material materials mapping dot try to get value Now the key is going to be the material, really wants to use matrix, material, and the out value, or output, is going to be out material, I'm going to create a new variable, material copy is going to be the copy of the original one. And now if this is equals to false, I'm gonna do I'm gonna change the material so material 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 copy is equals to new material and then I use material mappings. Now I can add my settings, my new settings to to my copy. So material And in the end, all I have to do is that material copy, material copy dot set in. So now we want to. Now we can use the name we created here. So I want to change the shader test mode to 
I'm gonna cast this as an integer to to my to this component that I created to my to my new comparison. And now in the end, all we have to do is the graphic material is equal to material. I'm going to mispronounce this. I'm going to fix it. Material. So now it's, it's a bit complicated script for something that it shouldn't be that complicated, but now we have like a, a screen overlay effect. So I can see the, the loading bar, no matter whether it's like behind the object or not. So I can see it here, which previously I couldn't, and I can still see it here as well. And if I like move closer to it, I can still see it. Like before, when it loaded, it would disappear. So now I have this uh, effect, no matter the distance of what object is in front of me. So that's basically how you do uh, UI screen overlay for word space in VR.